are the common challenges SME boards face in leveraging digital technology? And what advice do you have for overcoming these hurdles? And Bob, for those who don't know, what is an SME to kick this one off? Okay, so SME is is the acronym for small medium enterprises, which depending on your definition is anybody from a million dollar a year turnover or half a million dollar a year turnover up to 200 million. And that's kind of the medium med. And for some people, that's large, right? Welcome to this episode of the AEC Engineering and Technology Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping engineering professionals find technology that fits their needs. In this episode, I'll be speaking with Robert or Bob Cotton, an independent consultant and executive coach and chair of the Ann Robson Trust. We'll be speaking about how organizations can integrate digital technology to drive business success, the common challenges SME boards encounter in leveraging technology, and the role of digital innovation in healthcare services. With that, let's jump into today's episode. That's time for our conversation of the week with Bob Cotton. Bob, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on the show today. Hey, Naked, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I, uh, it's it's a pleasure, Bob. And I know you know just based on a little bit that we chatted just before, we've got a, a lot to get into. So, Bob, we'll start with our first question for you. How did you begin your career as a consultant and executive coach, and how have you used technology to drive business success? Okay, so big question. Um, the easy part, I started uh, by accident about 30 years ago. Uh, I came out of college, I joined BP, I was interested in traveling, and they put me into an IT, a business IT group that managed supply chain in the UK. And I got out of there, I through that, I got onto a European-wide program that was building an ERP on top of Oracle Financials to run all of BP's business in Europe built from the ground up, business process change. I was on the business side. That got me into technology. That got me into businesses, process, business, how businesses run. And I worked in pretty much every country you can think of around Europe in the 90s and ended up in America when it went global. And then I hopped from BP to Oracle and I've been deploying technology, helping clients with technology for the best part of 30 years. Um, and along the way, starting with that BP experience, the whole point and the value of coaching people and influencing people to own their own outcomes and drive change for themselves with technology as an enabler uh, of that process, that that was clear to me from the beginning. And that's a, th- a thread I've carried out all throughout my life up to this point. Excellent. So you've, you've been in the game for a while, um, helping customers implement technology. So Bob, my next question is, so how do organizations effectively adopt and integrate technology to maximize value? Because I think just knowing about the technology is one thing, but actually using it effectively is an entirely different story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and there are definitely t- two sides to that equation. So one is is from the deployment of technology and and the people who come in and say, here's, here's something great, new, shiny, that's going to make the world a better place. But often the people who have forgotten are the people who are going to be using that. So when I was in Oracle, I ran businesses in Oracle that used Oracle technology. So I was a customer as well as a vendor. So I know both sides of that equation. And I think the answer to that, your question, the best way is to align the business, be very clear about the business objectives, Be very clear about what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it and then see what technology is going to enable that. Now, part of that is a discovery process and a brainstorm about the art of the possible, but but you have to always tie it back to the reality of where you are today and, and what change you can affect with the organization, with the technology, with the capital that you have to hand. No, absolutely. And that, that does make a lot of sense. And so my next question would then be maybe getting closer to that end user or individual contributor. What are the common challenges SME boards face in leveraging digital technology? And what advice do you have for overcoming these hurdles? And Bob, for those who don't know, what is an SME to kick this one off? Okay, so SME is is the acronym for small medium enterprises, which depending on your definition is anybody from a million dollar a year turnover or half a million dollar a year turnover up to 200 million. And that's kind of the medium med. And for some people, that's large, right? Um, but it, so it's, it's a hell of a big span of businesses, basically. 
across any kind of industry sector you can think of. But most of them are typically, the things they all tend to have in common is they tend to be very agile organizations. They tend to have a deep knowledge about their industry segment. And they tend to have a culture that's quite open and, and, and innovative. So those are all the good things. The challenges they tend to have are bandwidth, like the leadership bench is often so focused on running the business, they don't have time to think about the, the changes the technology projects kind of require you to think about. Uh, another is understanding their full potential, because often it's hard to benchmark against external companies to understand, well, if we adopt a technology in this area or that area, it could deliver an enormous value to us. And get understanding where that balance point is, is kind of tough. And then other challenges that a lot of small businesses have are access to, to talent and capital pools that enable you to make these kinds of changes. Um, and also for a lot of these businesses that may be family owned or family run, um, been operating a certain way in a certain market for a long time, they don't really have a, a collective memory of change or understand how to go about change. It's just not something the organization has needed to do. So when faced with a technology project, which is all about change, that can be a challenge. Which I think a lot of us maybe understand intuitively, especially on the small and medium business side, which I know I've been in my entire career, where you may not have the resources of you know, some of these larger firms or larger companies in your space, but you do have the agility to actually make and implement change, which is uh, always easier said than done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I guess the second part of your question was, uh, how do you how do you do it? How do you go about it? How do I help people? Well, really start with the leadership group and spend some time exploring what it is they're really trying to do why is it that they're thinking about this and encourage them to think about the art of the possible. So go through a process where you're looking very much blue sky. So they'll, they'll have already gone through that process. They'll come up with some conclusions because that's probably why we're having the conversation, but they, and they may be unsure how to go forward. So the first thing is to just go over that ground again and say, well, really, have we, have we really thought of everything? Is this really the right answer? And just be a safe, create a safe space where we can go over that ground again, where people don't feel uncomfortable going over it again. They can talk about the challenges they've got very openly. And out of that, come up with a set of goals that they have, a set of objectives, and more as importantly, a clear purpose about what those goals are. So this is the why. So this is the why bother part of the change and that is super important i think at the first of all at the leadership level so you get a consensus and a sense of conviction and buy-in that yes we're going to do this but secondly to communicate that through the organization because the organization is going to be impacted people who are just doing their day jobs day to day are suddenly going to be confronted with this change why what, what is it a threat to them? Is there an opportunity? Now, there should be an opportunity. There should be an opportunity for the business. There should be an opportunity for them as individuals. So getting all of that right and thought through is, is really the first step for me. And then once you've got that, you can move into the more, what you might call the more formulaic bits about managing the communication, setting a measurement criteria, as look, starting to, if it, for the technology element, because the technology is only one part of these changes, start looking at the vendors, start looking at the marketplace and, and how you're going to go about and do all of that. But but that that workshopping and, and discovery at the beginning is, is, is super important, I think. Absolutely. And I think, Bob, then like a natural next step is, you know, after you've gone through this a couple of times and the organization starts to understand the value of what any technology implementation can provide and it, it all depends the specifics depend from organization to organization and field to field but how do you promote a culture of innovation within organizations to stay competitive because i think pe once people understand it they're more receptive to it but in my experience yeah. it can be um it can be a little challenging at first yeah absolutely so i think i think there's a for me there's almost a two-stage I mean, the, the whole thing is a journey, but there's, there's kind of two stages 
the kind of repeat over and over again. The first stage is quick wins. So, and that's back, goes back to when you set those goals. So short sprints that deliver value and impact for people, usually cheaper and usually easier to deliver and have more value and more demonstrable value and everyone can celebrate the success than these longer term, bigger picture goals. So start with those because that introduces the concept of we're changing the status quo. We're doing it for the right reasons. We're doing it for the benefit of all the people in the organization and the business as a whole. So you get rid of the fear factor, you get the emotional buy-in and it starts to become normal. So, I mean, where I worked in, you know, Oracle, a very large corporation, underwent a process of creative destruction all the time. So it was just something you began, you accepted. It was just the way it was. For SMEs, that's not necessarily the case. So start small, deliver value, and get people familiar with it, and then start to become more ambitious. And just that process will get people engaged. And then you put in other mechanisms for getting people's feedback. So rather than it, the first few being done to people and with them being onboarded and engaged in that change process, you start soliciting their ideas and input as they start to own the outcome about how it could be better. And then that starts to create that culture of innovation where people realize it's not just about coming in at nine and leaving at five and doing my task. Actually, I'm going to be encouraged to give ideas and information and, and maybe incentivized too. And so some organizations will start as part of the incentivization bonuses for people around how they, what contributions they make in terms of innovation. So that's the ongoing process, but you start with those quick wins that, that demonstrate that change and impact. Bob, speaking of you know providing value with that first step, I'd actually like to talk about the technology, not as it applies necessarily internally to any company, but for their for say your clients, customers, I think a lot of times we can get focused on, you know, what does a technology do for us internally? You know, how does it affect our workflows? But at the end of the day, it's all about the customer. So how does customer centricity drive successful digital initiatives? And then how do organizations ensure they're providing value to their customers through the technology that they employ? Yeah, no, I think that, I think that's absolutely right. Cause business is, really only exist because of their customers. And if they're not satisfying their customers, then probably someone else will come along and do it. Hence the need for where technology can help you in your business to do that better. Fantastic. So that goes all the way back to that strategy and the goal setting at the beginning. If, and it all comes out of the business. So that, so really the leadership of the business in the example we're talking about should in that strategy be talking about their customers. They should be saying, where are we with our customers? Where could we be with our customers? Where should we be? Where do we want to be? And then how do we get there? And realistically, how can we do that with technology and with the resources that we have? So that should be at the core and the heart of everything. And typically these programs, once they start, especially if they start from a place of inertia where people haven't really done anything like this for a while, it carries on as part of business as normal, business operations. So there should be, it's not like people sit in a room once and go through this exercise and think about their customers and how technology can enable it. Usually it's because there's an imperative. There's some driving need externally, maybe the, maybe the, um, Owners, the, fi- the, who, the guys who are financing the company, putting pressure, maybe they're losing market share. There's something that will trigger this process. But once you're into it, it becomes part of operations. You're regularly reviewing, how are we looking at our customers? How are we using technology? Where else could we go? And that, that's absolutely vital. But it becomes natural once you've, once you've got into it. Absolutely. And, and Bob, I think you, you probably know this from you know, all the time you've just spent working with your clients that it, regardless of what technology we're using or how sophisticated it is, it, it's still a people business at the end of the day. Yeah. How do you build, how do you build and maintain strong relationships with clients, vendors, and partners to actually ensure that these projects are successful? Yeah, absolutely. It is. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? We've, we we're talking about technology and business, but we've not actually spoken about specific technology. It's all about behaviors and the way things work. And so that whole stakeholder 
management uh, engagement piece is so important and and i've seen and experienced a range of quality in that i i think the ones that work the best are ones where you can create some sense of partnership some sense of ideally some sense of co-creation around what you're doing the content rather than one party says this is what we want throws it over the wall to the other one and then the other one sends it back and sooner or later you find you've done that um so it's about staying engaged it's about creating a sense of partnership and it's about having a common view about what the outcomes could be and some sense of a shared reward and in my experience that's possible with all stakeholders even if you don't like each other even if the the organizations don't like each other even if there are people who don't like each other it's possible to construct engagement models where you push that to the side because actually the prize is the outcomes of the goals of why you're doing it and that can direct and pull everybody together but you have to resist the personality thing you have to put in these mechanisms around communication and engagement and then and then it and then it works well well said and and as as we know right always um easier said than done when it comes yeah, to yeah absolutely yeah just absolutely. because you know, you know people people are people and there are the the positive which i think are way outweigh the negatives but it's not like you know it's not like we're computers or machines and not everybody's exactly the same so i know exactly what you mean well one of the things i've spent that's one of the things i spent a lot of time on over my career is is repairing broken relationships creating relationships that are maybe across organizations that don't like each other or geography people working remotely in the same country so when i lived in the us i had this challenge but then maybe with say us and india or the uk and india where there are cultural differences that are even stronger than the regional cultural differences and and knitting that together it can be done and actually when you do it the energy that's released for all the people involved is it's self-sustaining but that's one of the key things i think to get right and Bob, let's go back to a comment you made a little bit earlier about, say, like, you know, the reasons like behind technology. Um, and one of that is often there is some return on investment that, you know, whether it's a company, a board of directors, an individual investor is looking to obtain. So what conditions are necessary for organizations to derive the maximum value from their tech investments? And what strategies would you recommend to optimize the returns? So um, I would say the key, the key is... What's your strategy, the clear strategy that you've got, why? Um, and what's the measurable outcomes that you're going to achieve? And how are you going to achieve them with the technology that you're looking at? You should be absolutely clear on that. Um, otherwise, you, why are you even investing? So you should be very clear on that. And then having having got to that point, you're then looking at, and, and you start that process of investing in technology and the deployment of the technology. You need governance around that process that talks of, that captures all the things we've talked about already on the call, but also captures KPIs that you've identified that are managing the business out, measuring, sorry, the business outcome and the impact of the technology and the impact of the change that you're doing for two reasons. One, you know, you're on track, so you should be doing this anyway. And two, it's a, uh, a reinforces to everybody the value and the importance of what you're doing. And those two together. So then if, if you've got an investor who's looking at you saying, well, why have you done this? You could say, well, these are the reasons why. This is where we were. This is where we are. And, and you, you can play that in any direction you want to employees. Well, why did we put this in? Well, because look, these are the benefits and you've got time to train to do something you've always wanted to do that you never could before. Whatever the, the metrics are, it's not just sales and revenues, margins, profitability, though they are absolutely part of it. There are lots of other measures as well. And it's it's working out where those are relevant in the change process and, and really, really lasering in on those. Absolutely. And, and speaking from experience, Bob, you know, some of those problem statements that you're using the technology to solve and not the other way around could be, you know, it's going to vary it's going to vary depending on who you are and what you do. But for my field, right, it's, hey, the compilation of our inspection reports is taking too long. 
or yeah. we don't have enough engineers to do tasks X, Y, and Z. So we want to make do with what we have and then working down the chain to find and implement a solution that meets the problem statement and not buying technology in search of a solution. Correct. Absolutely. That you're absolutely right. It's always grounded in what does the business need? If the business is working great with spreadsheets and fine, you know, if you're managing your, if you've got 10 customers and you're managing them on a spreadsheet, then don't go and buy a CRM system unless it's going to deliver something tangibly different for you. Now, if you might say, well, actually I need, I want to go from 10 customers to 40 customers and I want to have outbound marketing and I want to have an automated sales process. Okay, these are reasonable aspirations, but then quantify them. What is the value? Really? How, how, why? Pick that apart and then decide do what do we really need? And that it has to always, should always be the way technology is absorbed by a business. Absolutely. And Bob, thank you again so much for your time today. This has been a, a really wonderful discussion just at a, at a high and more strategic level um, about implementation and use of technology. But what advice would you give to engineers and technology professionals that want to excel in their careers by levering tech to make change within their organizations? I guess three things, I suppose, come to mind. First of all, remember the outcome, the, the, the business outcome that you're striving for. So never, never let the technology over to flip round. Second is you don't need and should never be an expert in technology because, you know, if you're, if by definition, that's not your, your job. So you don't need to be that and you shouldn't feel uncomfortable that you're not that. And the third then that follows on from those two things is gets help support from people who do know this stuff and it doesn't have to cost a fortune. There's lots of good material out on the internet. There are people like me you can talk to, but those three things, focus on your business, what you need. Don't be afraid that you don't know all the answers and get help, measured help to help you get to a place where you feel comfortable and you can guide and drive things forward. Well said, Bob. And thank you again so much for joining us today. What's the best way our listeners can connect with you if they have any questions about what we've talked about today? Uh, yeah, uh, that would be great. A couple of ways. LinkedIn, you'll get me on LinkedIn under Bob Cotton. Uh, the other is on email, which is algodonservices at gmail.com. Excellent, Bob. Thank you again so much for taking the time. And I'm sure we'll, we'll talk again soon. That'd be great, Nick. Thanks for having me. Likewise. Take care. Please remember, you can find the show notes for this episode at aectechpodcast.com. There, you will find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering and technology endeavors. Thank you.